We talked last time about what makes a, a well-designed website by talking about some visual aspects of it. <clears throat> There's not too much content on it. There's space around things. There's a good organization. There's a consistent organization. Things along those lines. It's not too cluttered. All right. But then we started looking at the bigger picture. <clears throat> It said what really makes for a good website is a website that, that serves the goals of the organization that made the site and the goals of the people that are visiting the site. So that was kind of our conclusion, at least it was my conclusion, of the good design uh, discussion. <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to come up with a method that we can do this, a method that we can develop a well-designed website. So in order to do that, and this is relevant as far as your project goes, so in order to do that, the thought is, is that we're going to go through a series of steps, and <clears throat> we're going to start out talking about goals, what the goals are for the website. Define those. Define our goals and define the goals of the people that are visiting the website. That's like the start, starting point. Once we do that, then we're going to start zeroing in on, well, what content will help those people achieve those goals? How can we organize that content? How can we lay out each page? And then finally, what's each page going to look like? So we're zeroing in. We start out with very, something very broad and maybe a little abstract, goals, and we zero in on specific stuff on specific pages. And that's the design document that you're going to do in this class. There's five steps to it. And we talked about one of the steps last time. And we'll talk a little bit more about it today. And we spend the most time on this step because it's probably the most well, I don't want to say it's the most important step, but it is a very important step. Uh, if you don't do this correctly, you're going to get off on the wrong foot. And it's going to be very difficult to develop a, a well-designed website if you don't know what the goals you have in mind are. It may look aesthetically pleasing, but if it doesn't serve the goals of the organization and the people that are visiting the site, then it might look nice, but so what? All right, so let's go on Canvas and look at the project document. somewhere down here. So each one of these things in larger print is a section of your document. So you'll create a document that has four sections plus a set of HTML files. All right. First one is strategy. And that is where you define why you're making the site. Now again, I know why you're making the site in this class, right? You're making a site to get a good grade. All right. But put yourself in the shoes of the organization that makes the site. If you are doing a website, let's say, for a fictional restaurant, all right, or even a real restaurant, right? You know, 
take your favorite restaurant and develop a website for them. Why not? You know, your favorite sports team, um, favorite musician, uh, video game, whatever. If you were making a site for them, what would your goals be? Try to make them as tangible as possible. And express them in a way where you're saying, this is what I hope happens because people visit my site. Don't just describe the content of the site. Let me give you a for, for, for instance. For instance, you shouldn't say my goal is to develop a website with good navigation. That kind of almost goes without saying, right? Um, good navigation is, is important for any website. So why would you say that's your goal? Are you creating this website so people will go to your website and look and admire the navigation? Probably not, all right? Now, you want it to be good, all right? But that's not why you want people visiting your site, all right? You might want people visiting your site to attract more customers, all right? So that might be a goal. Uh, you might want it to help your current customers, possibly purchase more things from you. You know, if you think about it, if you're a restaurant, um, you, one of your goals might be to attract more customers. Another goal might be to get your current customers to come and eat at your place more often. Right? Those are two slightly different goals, and they might have different purposes. If you're a band, you might want to keep, one of your goals might be to keep your current fans informed about what you're doing and where you're going to be at and so on. Uh, another goal might be to uh, draw in brand new fans that never heard of you. All right. Another goal might be to allow for uh, people that run clubs to find out about your band because maybe they'd want to book you all right, for an appearance. So think of goals. What are the results that you want for, from the people that are visiting your site? Okay. So in this section, you're going to write a little description of your site's topic or purpose. You're going to create three personas, and we talked about personas last time. <clears throat> personas are sort of sample people that are representative of the kind of people that are going to be visiting your site. All right? Getting back to the band example, one persona might be a loyal fan of the band, someone that you know, goes frequently to hear the band's appearances, buys t-shirts, and so on. A second persona might be someone that is interested in music and likes the kind of music that you play, but has never heard of you guys, but maybe has heard their friends talk about you guys. All right. And a third one might be the owner of a club or a, a, a radio station or something like that to see if you're going to be suitable for their club or whatever. So you're going to describe your site's topic or purpose in a paragraph. You're going to create the three user personas. And you are going to create then three goals for you, putting yourself in the shoes of whoever's creating this website, whoever's creating this website for, um, and three goals for each of the personas. All right? So when you're done, you should have 12 goals. Now there's going to be some overlap. Right? Um, maybe maybe uh, a brand new fan or prospective fan and a club owner, once, one of their goals is to find out like, what the band sounds like, find, find out if they like the band or something like that. So there could be similar goals for a club owner and for a new fan. All right? But there's also going to be differences in the goals. If you consider, in a different example, people that are uh, visiting the college's website, uh, a current student and a prospective student might be interested in what degree offerings there are. All right? 
uh, a traditional student, that is a student that's coming into college directly from high school, and a non-traditional student, that is a student who is coming to college after a few years after graduating from high school and probably after they've worked a while, um, might have some similar goals too. They might want to see when certain when courses are offered, all right, or so on. So there can be overlap in the goals, but there's also some things that are distinct to each group. So create three goals for the organization that's creating a site, three goals for each of your user personas. And keep those personas in your mind as you go and create the rest of the site. All right? It should look professional. You should do this in Word. And it should read like something that you give your boss, not just rough notes. Each of the personas should be on their own page and should contain an actual photo. So do this upright, all right? It, it sounds a little corny, but actually the more realistic you can create those personas, the more it will help you put yourself in their shoes and think about the website from their perspective. So make fictional people that are going to visit your site. If you're a band, you know, <clears throat> Make up a person that is a fan of the band. Make up someone that has never heard of the band but might be interested. Make up a club owner and give them certain characteristics. Just like we saw the example last time of someone that was shopping for shoes uh, that had narrow feet. Well, is narrow feet the only kind of person that we want to appeal to with our shoe store? No, but they're sort of representative of a larger group of people. That is people who have a hard time finding shoes that work for them, all right? Maybe uh, a person works and is on their feet 10 hours a day, and therefore they're very particular about the kind of shoes that they have. So that would be another person that would be maybe sort of related to the person with narrow feet. That is, they have very specific requirements for their shoes. All right, that's the strategy section. Be as specific as you possibly can. The more specific you are, the better the rest of it can go. You know, if let's say you're going to do a website about jazz, and you said one of your goals is to provide information about jazz, well, OK. But that leaves a lot of room where you're not really clear. Now maybe, and you can take that in several different directions, depending on the direction you want to take your, your site. Maybe you want to provide information to like high school students or college students that maybe don't know anything about jazz and are taking a course about jazz and want to get some additional information. Or maybe you're providing information for people that already know a little bit about jazz and they like what they've heard uh, and they want to learn more. Or maybe you're doing this for younger people, for high school students or even grade school students. Or maybe you're doing it for musicians. All right. If I'm doing a website about jazz and I'm gearing it towards musicians, um, it's going to be much different than if I'm doing a website and I'm gearing it towards adult people that are listeners. Now, you can gear your website towards more people, more different groups of people, but it does help to sort of have a focus that this is a site that's mainly interested in educating the general public about jazz music. And that might include people that know nothing about it, people that know a little bit about it, and people that just want to maybe pick up a little bit of additional information. So the more specific you can make this, the better off you're going to be. Don't just say we're going to have information about jazz. Say we're going to have information about jazz for young musicians. All right? That is a much better goal because it's much more specific. All right. The next step 
in the design document is what's called the scope. And the scope and the strategy, these all start with S's, I think, except for the last one. <coughs> the scope and the strategy go together because the scope is the goals. I'm sorry, the strategy is the goals. And the scope is what you're going to try to do to achieve those goals. It's like if you talk about business or even military. There's strategy, there's tactics, and then there's operations. The operations is just sort of making sure the day-to-day -day stuff goes well. All right. The strategy is sort of the overall goal. The tactics is how you're going to achieve that goal. So if you think, if, if your restaurant, for example, has a goal of increasing revenue by 10%. What are some ways that you can increase revenue by 10%? Pictures. Pictures? And, and how would that be increasing? How could that lead to increasing the revenue? Uh, okay. So the strategy, the strategy might be to increase your revenue by a certain amount. One of your requirements, one of your parts in the scope section might be something like include pictures of popular dishes in order to attract new customers. Okay? So that's one way that you could achieve that goal or try to achieve that goal. It supports that goal. All right? Because people look at that and say, oh, that looks delicious. I, I want to go and have some. All right? What's another way, a different way? Right. List specials, maybe even include a coupon. All right. Indicate that, you know, uh, Friday night we, have, we offer such and such. Or if you bring this coupon in, you get, I don't know, an appetizer for free or whatever. All right? So it would be a second way to try to achieve that same goal, right? Uh, would be to give some sort of coupon, some sort of deal, or communicate those deals to people. Anything else you think? How, what, would that, what would make you go to a restaurant? Menu. Uh, one of the requirements might be show the menu, right? Um, if you think about it, there's people that have food allergies. There's people that have dietary restrictions for whatever reason. There's people that just have preferences, you know? If you are a family, for example, you, you very likely you might have some young picky eaters. So is there anything on the menu that the kids will eat? That might be a, a, a guiding uh, a force in making your decision you know, and so on. So if you provide the menu, people can look at it and say, yeah, I think this works for me and my group, or no, it doesn't. All right? If there's no menu at all, uh, you're probably going to say, well, I don't know. It's better safe than sorry. We'll pick somewhere else. All right? Anything else? What's Yelp? Reviews, right? So. Reviews of people, maybe even link to your Yelp page or your, your section of Yelp that, that says uh, the ratings and all that, you know, and comments. Now, people have to take those with a grain of salt, right? I mean, because it could be your mom and dad that went on there and rated and all that. But, again, if you have a whole bunch of positive reviews, you know, or if your restaurant was reviewed in a newspaper, maybe, you know, uh, then maybe that get, adds increased credibility to it. All right. So we have that one goal of increasing revenue 10%. We've thought of a number of things that we could do to help us achieve that goal. Does that mean we're going to do all of them? Probably not. But this is an aspect of web design too, deciding what content on the page is most effectively going to help you achieve your goals. All right? So you'd pick a few things, a, a few methods of trying to achieve that, and that would become requirements. 
All right? So there's a correspondence between goals and requirements. Remember, you have 12 goals. The organization has three. Each persona has three. And so on. And then you have a list of requirements. Now, one requirement might help support several different goals. For example, one of your goals might be a lot of restaurants offer catering to. So maybe one of your goals is to uh, increase your, your restaurant revenue by 10%. Another of your goals might be increase your catering uh, revenue by 20%. That could be a second goal. Now, some of the same things that you do to help increase your restaurant revenue might also help you increase your catering revenue, right? If I was looking for a caterer and I read a restaurant review that said these people make fantastic food, that could affect my decision, right? So maybe my goal is to increase catering. Maybe this person's goal is, is find a caterer. Maybe I have another goal to increase the restaurant revenue. And then maybe I have, as a requirement, a review. Posting reviews could actually help satisfy all those goals. So it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between your requirements and your goals. Your requirements are the things that you're going to choose to put on your site. The goals are what you hope the site will achieve and what your users hope that they will achieve by visiting their, their site. And it might not be a one-to-one -one correspondence. One requirement can actually help with several goals. And the other way around is true, too. One goal might have several different requirements on it. Uh, I might have the catering. price plan. Well, the reviews and the catering price plan might help someone find a caterer. All right, those two goals. So it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence. But here's the thing. When you're done, there better be at least one requirement for every goal that you've defined. And every requirement better correspond to at least one goal. If that's not the case, then you missed the boat somewhere. All right? Because if you have a goal, if you've decided that this is one of the most important things that the site needs to, to do, but you don't have any content that helps achieve that goal, then you need to rethink. And you need to come up with some content that's going to help achieve that goal. All right? Especially as we define a well-designed website as being a site that helps the users achieve their goals. Now, the reverse is true, too. If I have a requirement on the list and I don't, it doesn't correspond to any goal, then do we really need that? Maybe not. Uh, Pictures of the chef, all right? Would that help achieve any goal? Maybe, maybe not. If it was a famous chef that people saw on TV or even was well-known throughout the area, maybe pictures of the chef would help increase the revenue. But if the person didn't have some sort of reputation or wasn't well-known, you have a picture of a guy, this guy, yeah, that's the chef, all right. 
Does that really add anything to the site? Probably not. Well, you might say, put it on anyhow. What could it hurt? Well, remember, any content that you have on the website that isn't essential could distract people from the stuff that is important. All right? So, if your chef went to some French cooking school and worked in a, a big, big time restaurant in New York and got great reviews there, yeah, maybe have the chef's biography on your website. If your chef worked at Burger King before and then went to Wendy's, chef might be a great chef, but their biography isn't going to get more people in the uh, uh, in your restaurant. All right, it might be a great cook, but the biography won't attract any attention, and therefore probably omit it because that distracts people away from the content that is important. So that is the scope section. All right, in the in the requirements, uh, I'm sorry, in the goal section, we have a list of goals. In the strategy section, we have a list of goals. In the requirement section, we have a list of requirements. And it probably should just be a list, all right? Don't try to write it as a paragraph. Make it a bulleted list. Um, biography of the chef. List of daily specials. You know, the site will have a list of daily specials. The site will have dietary information for people that have dietary restrictions. The site will have a link to their Welp page, uh, Yelp page. Welp page, what would that be? People complaining about your website? I don't know, about your roster. And so on. It should just be a list. Don't make me or anyone else reading your document work to pluck out the important stuff. So I say here, not merely a list of things required, <coughs> that's true, but you can't have lists as part of this. All right? You can't have lists as part of this. A list of your goals, a list of the user requirements. Let's go back a second. Why do we go through all the trouble of making this document? Because making this document requires so much work before we even start making web pages. Why do we go through the trouble of making a design document like this? Yeah, so you're not making it up as you go, so you sort of have a plan. Any important task that you have is probably will benefit from some sort of planning before you do it. Any other reason? Pardon me? To stay on target. Yeah, to know this is what we need to do, this is what we're going to go do. As opposed to, well, let's just start making pages and when we feel like we're done, we're done. No, you define, care, you do your best at defining what you need and then you stay on target with that. You also do it to communicate to people. Let's say, for example, I was hired as a consultant to create a website for a restaurant. Am I going to be at the restaurant 24-7 talking to the owner of the restaurant? And No. I'm going to meet with them a few times. I might meet with them once at the beginning of the process to try to figure out what they need. Maybe I'll exchange emails and provide like weekly updates like this is the progress I made, this is the progress I made. You want to communicate to them before you actually go and do something what your plans are so that they can look and say, oh, yeah, that's a good idea, or, oh, no, maybe I don't, I don't really want to do that, you know. So you want to communicate with the people that you're developing the site for. You may also want to communicate if you're working with a team of developers. For example, I may be a lead consultant with a team that's going to be creating this site for a restaurant. Well, I might be working with a graphic designer, with a coder, all right? And I want to keep all them on the same page, too, so that they know what they need to do, so they're not winging it as well. 
And the other thing is, just to get my own thoughts on paper, even if I was the only one working on the site, it's better to take a minute and plan it than to just shoot from the hip, right? It's like writing a paper in English class. And I know a lot of people don't do it, but probably every English pe uh, professor you've had has said, make an outline first, write a rough draft first, go through some sort of planning phase, and then go and make the final document. Same idea here. So we do it to communicate to other people that are involved on the project. We do it to capture our own thoughts. And I like what you said about staying on track, keeping your eyes on the goals of what you need to do instead of just wandering around, ambling, figuring out what you need to do on the, side, uh, you know, on the fly. So the scope is a list of requirements. By the way, read this, you know. Uh, I'm going over the highlights, and I'm trying to explain the parts that I don't think are necessarily, um, that I think require further explanation. But read this to get other, other points as well. The third thing is called the structure. And the structure is <coughs> how we're going to lay out what pages we're going to have and how they're going to be organized. All right. Now, the output of the structure phase is a chart that looks like sort of like an organization chart. Well, we're going to have something like, here's our home page. That's going to be linked to this page, this page, this page and this page. So maybe for our restaurant, here's our home page. Here's about our catering. Here is our menu. Here's our specials. Here's our reviews. And here's how to contact us. All right. That would be a structure chart. All right. Now, could we structure our page differently? Absolutely. We could, for example, underneath the home page, have a menu page, but have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner page. All right. Maybe we don't have reviews on its own page, but maybe we sprinkle reviews on every page. We can put just on the top of the page maybe a different review that someone has had about our restaurant. That's what I mean by the structure. What pages are you going to have and how they're going to be organized? Now, for almost every topic, you could organize stuff in different ways. All right? For example, if I was doing my website about jazz music, I could separate things into time periods 1920 and before, 1920 through 1940, 1940 through 1960. 1960 to now. All right, that would be one way to organize my material. A different way to organize my material would be by the instrument that the musician played. All right, um, here's the page for trumpet players, here's the page for saxophone players, drummers, bass players, and so on. I could talk about styles. Here is a page about New Orleans jazz. Here is a page about the big band era. Here's a page about bebop. Here's a page about uh, modern jazz, and so on. 
So for every topic, there could potentially be multiple ways to organize the stuff in the pages. How are we going to decide what the best way to organize our site is? That's true. Preferences and user usability. How are we going to determine that, though? Okay. One way you can do it is you can sort of mock up different layouts. All right. Uh, we're going to be talking about prototypes in a minute here, and the one thing that um, I don't require you to do is to come up with multiple prototypes. But that would be one way to do it, would be to mock up some web pages a couple different ways and show it to people and get their feedback. The other way to do it would be to think of the goals that the people have that are visiting your site and to think about who the users are, who those personas are. So again, if I'm going to be developing a website for musicians, then my layout might be one way. If I develop a website for listeners, it might be another way. So depending on who my personas are and what my goals are and what their goals are, that will help lead us to what the best decision is. You try to develop a website so it makes sense to your users, not that makes sense to you. All right? I'll give you an example of that. In, at LC, there's several divisions that offer computer, computer classes, classes that deal with technology and computers. What they've done, though, is I may know which division offers computer gaming and simulations because I work here. But someone from the outside might not know that. So what they've done is they've created a page that organizes all the different computer degree programs together on a single page, and you can go there. So an outsider, a student, a high school student, or a non-traditional student doesn't have to know what division offers these things. They just need to know that they're interested in computers. So the layout is based not on how someone that works at the college understands the way the college is set up, but how an outsider sees how the college is set up. Okay? So that's another example. So you're right. It, it can be difficult. You can mock things up if you have a lot of time, make a couple different prototypes. Or you could just try to put yourself in the shoes of the personas and see which of the potential layouts make sense to you. For this project, I would ask you to consider a couple of options. All right? Don't just come up with the first thing that you think of. Think of an alternative and then try to decide which one of the two alternatives is better. All right? An example I often give is of a sporting goods store. All right? A sporting goods store could organize their content a lot of different ways. It could separate into men's and women's. It could separate apparel and equipment and shoes. All right? It could separate by brand. Here's all the Nike stuff. Here's all the Adidas stuff. Here's the New Balance stuff. It could separate by sport. Here's the running stuff. Here's the basketball stuff. Here's the football stuff, and so on. Which one of those is the best way? Again, you have to think through what your goals are and think through about the personas that you've created and how a typical user is best going to be able to work their way around based on the fact that there's a couple of reasonable ways to do that. All right, so the output of this is going to be a chart like that. So we have a list of goals a list of requirements, and then a chart 
with a little bit of explanation. Finally, we have what's called a wireframe, sometimes called a skeleton. A wireframe is sort of a high-level sketch where you define the sections of the page. So in this step, we decided what pages we're going to have and how they're going to be linked together. In this step, we decide what each page is going to look like. So maybe this is our band. This might be our navigation. This might be the page's content. This might be a footer. This might be, getting back to our restaurant example, an aside that contains reviews. So we may decide that all our pages are going to look like that. All right? They're all going to have the same basic structure. Now, maybe not all our pages are going to have the same basic structure. Oftentimes, for example, the home page is laid out slightly differently than the other pages. Or there might be pages that have special content on them that we want laid out a little bit different. So you won't necessarily have one wireframe, but you're not going to have one wireframe for pay, per page, right? Because you want a consistent look. You don't want every page to be laid out differently. Like, hmm, on one page we have it like this. On another page we put the navigation over here. And then on the third one we put the navigation going horizontal. It doesn't even make sense, right? It makes sense that you're going to have one sort of primary layout for most of your pages, and then maybe another one for a special page or two. So if you're, if you're tempted to create too many wireframes, I'd ask you to rethink it. Pretty much everyone's site is going to have one or two wireframes, and that's probably it. All right? So this is a great opportunity for you all right, to take it easy on yourself. Don't create work for yourself. Don't create a separate wireframe for every page because your pages should have a consistent layout. So if you're, if you're tempted to make more than, more than one or two, then think about it and talk to me about it. Okay, these four steps, the list of goals, the list of requirements, the structure of the site, the skeleton of the individual pages will be done in a Word document. <coughs> All right. The last step is a prototype, which we'll talk about next time. All right. The prototype is sort of a model or a mock-up of your website. The first four sections are very useful, but in the prototype, that brings things to life. And it actually shows people web pages that sometimes it makes it easier for them to decide if they like it or not when they actually see a completed or a semi-completed web page. All right, so next week we're going to talk about the prototype and the portfolio. All right, the portfolio is a separate assignment. And then we'll get into a lot of CSS to help us achieve the kinds of wireframes that we want. Someone by bump their microphone. Did you have a question? OK. That's all right. Usually, most of the time, when people bump it, it is an accident. So, Like, how do we make a CSS to make our page be laid out like that? All right, we'll spend a lot of time talking about that. So that's what's up for next week. Finish the prototype, portfolio, discussion, and then CSS to achieve the layouts that we want. All right, I will see you up in lab. <laughs>